Welcome to StreamPunk. Today, we're going to do a gear review. So in front of me, I have some Sonos speakers. Over here, we have a pair of Sonos One SLs, and then in front of me here is one of Sonos soundbars. Uh, they have two, I believe. One's a little bit bigger. This is the smaller one. It's called the Beam. And uh, just real quick, I'll explain how I got these. Uh, this is not a sponsored video of any kind. Uh, these two speakers were a gift from my employer to recognize uh, five years of working with them. And uh, I, at first I didn't really understand why they gave me two. Uh, you know, these are just like normal smart speakers and I thought, well maybe, you know, we have a two-story home so perhaps the thought was, you know, a smart speaker on each uh, floor of the house. And that's definitely something we could have used them for. But as I did more research, I found out you can make these into a stereo pair. So using the app, you can uh, assign them to work as a left and right channel pair for listening to music. So if that's something you're interested in, these two can be used in conjunction that way. But because I'm a movie fan and I've always tried to set up my movie room to be more cinematic, I thought, oh, maybe I can turn these into surround sound speakers and add the beam as my uh, front, center, left, and right channel. So that's the setup I'm going for here today. It's obviously not full 5.1 surround sound. Uh, you would need a subwoofer to complete that set, but the Sonos subwoofer is very expensive. It's like $600. Um, and the Sonos uh, speakers seem to be quite expensive just on their own. It's a very pricey brand. But again, like I said, I got these two for free uh, from my boss. And then they also gave me an Amazon gift card and I applied that towards purchasing the Beam, which was $400. So this is pricey stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how I set it up. The speakers aren't in these boxes. I've already got it set up in my movie room upstairs. And uh, just go through real quick the setup process and some of the issues I ran into along the way. So let's check it out. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got the Beam soundbar plugged in just beneath the television. And our setup is an L-shaped couch here. So we just have a speaker on each end, kind of in the corner. So one over there and one over on this side. So these are each the one SL speakers that are set up to be surrounds. And uh, they do require power, so they are plugged in. Uh, you see the cable running to the back, but that's it. Um, when these white lights are white, that's a good thing. That means everything's connected and working the way it's supposed to, which is not how things were at first, and I'll explain why. It all starts over here with this speaker. So when I was setting up the system, um, you know, these lights flash different colors. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's orange, and sometimes it's white. And then even more variation is sometimes those lights are pulsing um, or strobing, and then sometimes they're solid like they are right now. So really this should be easy for most people, but of course I ran into an issue uh, because I'm special that way. Uh, these speakers connect over your Wi-Fi network. They're not Bluetooth speakers. So they don't communicate with each other over Bluetooth. They communicate through each other via your Wi-Fi network. So it's pretty easy to set up in the app. Unfortunately, the app never detected my home Wi-Fi. And so I ended up having to, if we look on the back here, uh, the, the back of the speaker has, um, there's only two plugs and the one plug is on the bottom. You can see the power is going. It's nicely placed underneath the speaker. There's a button on the back that's kind of like a power reset button for the speaker. And then there's an ethernet port for a direct internet connection, which is what I'm doing now. Despite having the issues resolved, I'm still just sticking with this wired connection over here. But once one of the speakers has uh, at least a connection to your Wi-Fi or a wired connection like it does here, then the rest are able to sync up. So the issue it turned out for me was that my Wi-Fi, for some reason, is set up on a 5 gigahertz system instead of a 2.4 gigahertz system. I don't know what that means technically, but essentially you're going to be unable to connect to a Wi-Fi network that's on a 5 gigahertz system. I didn't know mine was set up that way. Um, so we found that out, uh, me and a support person with Sonos discovered the issue. So again, until AT&T comes out and changes those network settings, I'm just living off of the wired connection for now. 
Now for setting up the beam, things are pretty simple. Obviously it has power just like the One SL speakers do. Um, and then on the back there's also uh, that ethernet port in case you wanna wire it, uh, do a wired connection. And then there's an HDMI. Now the HDMI is the only way to connect to this speaker so if you have a television or a Blu-ray or 4K player that only has a fiber optic out for audio, uh, Sonos does include a handy adapter that does an optical uh, port to HDMI adapter. So either way, you're going to be going into the back of the beam with uh, an HDMI cable provided by Sonos. They include an HDMI cable in the box as well as that adapter in case you need it to connect to an optical port. So just going behind the back of the TV here to show how I have it connected. And I never knew this before, but you can't just plug it into any HDMI. Again, I'm going through the TV because I want the live, you know, I want Netflix and, you know, all my streaming services, all the sound I want coming from the TV going to the soundbar, not just my Blu-ray or 4K player. So I've got these three HDMI ports to choose from. And the one that's labeled ARC, which is HDMI port 2 here, that's the port that you're gonna to want to plug into. I'm not sure what ARC stands for, but it indicates that that's where the audio is going to go out from the TV into the speaker. And so if your TV has that, which it should, or your player has that, that's what you're gonna plug into. So you can't plug into any of the other uh, HDMI ports, just the ARC. Okay, now here's the issue I ran into initially with the Beam soundbar. So I've got my 4K player hooked up and I'm going to insert this disc, uh, start playing it now. And when it starts up, we hear the sound just like we should. Great, we're in business and I'm happy to see that working. At least that's how I felt when I first set it up. Then we get to the DVD menu here and we still hear the music. I hit play to start the movie. So the movie starts playing and I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe there's not really any music. Maybe it's like a soft start here at the beginning. Um, keeps going through the logo. This is, you know, just how I felt when I first watched it. And yeah, at some point you realize, okay, there's no audio coming out of here now. There was audio, it played for the opening Paramount logo when the disc was put in. The audio was coming through fine for the DVD menu. And for the actual movie playing, I'm not getting anything. So I chapter skip ahead. Don't hear anything. These are obviously very loud, boisterous scenes. And we're getting nothing. So what went wrong? So here's what I figured out, and hopefully this helps anybody having a similar issue. So this is an LG TV. I'll put the model number up there just to be specific if anyone wants to know that. Um, so if we go to settings over here, we're gonna go to the audio settings. So that's the second one down here under sound. We go to sound out. This is already set up because it's already, you know, it's linked to the beam sound bar. And so this took a little bit of trial and error, but what I eventually noticed was here where it says digital sound out, it's on auto, which is usually what I leave things on. That way it's able to detect, you know, what type of uh, audio file is coming from the TV or the disc or whatever. Um, and if I change it, it only goes to this PCM option. If I click it again, it goes back to auto. So what I notice is that this needs to be in PCM, at least on my television. When I switch it to PCM and I go back, the movie should play properly. And it is, and it's playing loudly and sounds wonderful. So this is what I was hoping to hear when I first popped it in. It's strange that you have to make that modification. Again, this might be model specific to my TV. Somehow I feel like it's not just me. Uh, but yeah, I just noticed that I have to change that digital out uh, signal to PCM. If I set it to auto, it doesn't seem to make it successfully to the beam soundbar, even though certain tracks, you know, including the opening logo and the DVD menu went through properly. Uh, also worth pointing out that even in that auto mode, uh, when I watched normal broadcast television, that was going through just fine as well. So I'm not really sure what the hangup is here, but the problem was solved by switching it to PCM for all audio uh, output.
The app is also a pretty good design and once I got everything working, uh, things have been simple. Uh, really easy to customize things. You can set up different rooms. Um, so I've got my game room set up and that's where you can kind of mess with the products and uh, adjust uh, you know, different uh, settings on each of the speakers. I can add a subwoofer here. I can remove the surrounds and if I wanted to use them as smart speakers somewhere throughout the house. Um, yeah, it's really just easy to, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good app design. So if you don't have any issues like I did getting into uh, or getting it to connect to your Wi-Fi, um, you should really find it to be a pretty easy experience. Um, easy to play music. Uh, you play it from your phone. It's really the only way to control it. Uh, you also have EQ settings, so you can modify that way. Um, you can adjust uh, the surround sound audio levels, so if you want it to be louder or quieter based on the position of the speakers. Um, they've really thought of everything. It's a, it's a good app, and uh, it also can work on a laptop or desktop computer. There's also you know, an app you can download for that. And so that's my Sonos experience so far. Again, there were a few obstacles in the way of getting these things set up, but they are set up and working beautifully now. The one thing missing to complete the surround sound set would be to one day add uh, that subwoofer, that $600 subwoofer. Again, I think price is the biggest barrier people are going to run into when buying Sonos products. I think the sound quality is there. I don't really have a way of judging it against other systems like Bose and other manufacturers, but I do have to think that there are some completely viable options that deliver very good sound quality, perhaps just as good as these, maybe even better, um, at a much more competitive price. But since I received these two as a gift and, you know, basically, you know, got this basically paid for from the gift card I received as well, uh, I'm happy with the set. I'm happy to have it. I think it looks really good in white. We have a lot of white accents in our home, so I think it matches well. These obviously come in black if you prefer that. Um, the Sonos app, once I got it working again, has been easy to use as far as playing music. Um, you know, wherever I am in the house, I can control it easily from the app. So I hope you found this review helpful, and if you're looking to set up your own surround sound system, or again, possibly just using two Sonos S1 SLs as a stereo pair for music, you can use it that way, and at the very least, you could buy just one of these smart speakers just to be a way to play music in your bedroom, somewhere in your house, or maybe even outside when you're hosting a party. So I do recommend these products if you can stomach the price. I hope you enjoyed this review, and we'll see you again later. Bye.